Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for Your Word for the Day. My name is Robert, one of the pastors here, and it is great to be with you as we journey through the book of Matthew together. We've been uh, working our way passage by passage through this so that we can get to know God's Word and get to know uh, Jesus through understanding the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, first four books of the New Testament, rather. Uh, and, and these tell us about Jesus' life and His teaching, the events surrounding what He did, and, and as you read through it, the, the topic of the temple comes up a lot because this was the center for religious activity. This is where sacrifice happened. This is where worship happened. This is where teaching happened. All of a, a Jewish person's life kind of centered around this as a center of social activity and religious activity. And so this is a, a topic of conversation for Jesus, this temple that had existed for, for quite some time at this point. Uh, I believe in, uh, 957 BC was the year it was built. So it's uh, roughly a thousand years old or so at this point, uh, and it's still the hub for all that is happening. And Jesus himself prayed and taught there, but it wasn't always, uh, you know, the, the rainbows and unicorns and wonderful experiences there, because there's also times where he rebuked. He brought challenges in this teaching. He rebuked Pharisees and the scribes and the elders that were there for, for how they misused scripture and misled people. He rebuked people, and even at one point, Scripture says he overturned tables and went through and cast out people who were acting as money changers and selling things there that weren't doing so with ethical motives and ethical means of their sale for people to buy things to sacrifice. They were taking advantage of people who were just there to worship, and they had, had led the, the, the culture of the temple astray. And so the temple is this thing that has so much to do. It is so ingrained in Jewish culture and really is so revered by people. This was, this was a place they protected throughout these thousand years against attack and destruction. And when bad things happened, they rebuilt it. And this was the center of everything that happened. And so one day it says that Jesus... It says in uh, Matthew 24, verses 1 through 2, Jesus left the temple, was going away. And when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple, they go, look at these amazing buildings. Isn't this great? They're like, you know, gawking at the skyscrapers in New York City or something. These awesome buildings that were so wonderfully crafted under the leadership of Solomon. But verse 2, it says, but he answered them, you see all those, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be one left here, one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Now it's really interesting. And Jesus at many points had made comments about the temple being destroyed and being rebuilt. And when he did that, he was prophesying about himself as the temple is the dwelling place of God according to what they understood in the Old Testament period. Well, after Jesus, the dwelling place of God is with, uh, with us and, and it's in heaven. It, it is a little different than it was in that period. But he said, hey, this, this temple, you'll destroy it and rebuild it in three days. But this time he just says, hey, this actual physical temple you're looking at is like, it's going to be destroyed. And this is interesting because there's a couple of things that Jesus is doing here. And the first thing that he's doing is he's going to use this as a launching point to, to not only uh, start reimagining how people view religion and following God and that it's not about a building and a location anymore. It's about a relationship with his son Jesus and placing your faith in him. It's not centered around Jerusalem. It's global now all over. So he's, he's starting that process of saying, hey, it it's bigger than just a building here. Let's, let's detach our emotions and our love from this building and attach it to the actual Savior of the world. He's also going to use this as a launching point to talk about the end times. Because for them, the temple being destroyed was the worst possible thing that they could imagine. And he's going to, in the, the next several paragraphs, explain some things that, hey, the, the world is going to progressively get worse and have more tragedy, more hardship, more difficulty. But I'm going to come back a second time, 